Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Good morning and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. My name is Michael Cromwell and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here and um, happy Labor Day weekend to you. We're so glad that you've tuned in with us this morning um, and pray that this is a wonderful and a rich time for us to be together, that God would speak in some incredible ways and that we might be changed as a result of our meeting with God today. Uh, let's pray together. God, thank you for the gift of this day and the opportunity that we have to worship you. Uh, we pray that as we come together today, virtually, uh, Lord, that you are in our midst, that you are moving um, in incredible ways. And specifically, God, I pray for more of you and for less of me as we share this morning. We love you and we praise you. All in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, I know that you're super excited about this Labor Day weekend sermon, right? One of everybody's favorite topics, Labor Day. Um, but we're so glad to be able to join together and to, and to share some things this morning. You know, Labor Day is one of those interesting holidays that we celebrate every year. We love it because we get a day off of work. Uh, but how much do we really know about Labor Day and how it was started? Well, this morning, I thought it might be kind of fun just to share a really brief history lesson on Labor Day. You see, in the, in the late 1800s, in the rise and the height of the Industrial Revolution, many workers worked for 12 hours each day, seven days a week. And many of these workers barely even earned enough money to be able to pay their bills and to support their families. In addition to this, children were also working. Young children were working similar hours and just as hard as sometimes as these adults and making much less money than the adults. Uh, and then you add on top of this that so many of the working conditions were not safe or were unsanitary. Well, because of these conditions, labor unions started to form. They wanted to, to serve as a voice for the wor workers who suffered under these various conditions. And these, these labor unions became vocal and they began organizing strikes and rallies in, in hope of advocating for better working conditions and environments and for higher pay. You know, some of these rallies, as you can imagine, even turned violent. Well, according to the History Channel, on September the 5th, 1882, 10,000 workers took unpaid time off to march from City Hall to Union Square in New York City, holding the first Labor Day parade in United States history. Well, because of several major riots and strikes of these unions, President Grover Cleveland proposed a bill that would make Labor Day a national holiday in 1894. And the bill was signed into law in June later of that same year. Well, 
Obviously, things have changed over the years, for the most part, thankfully. And Labor Day really now is more of an occasion to mark for some the end of summer or to enjoy a day off from work or maybe even to do some traveling, to take a little vacation with family and friends. Well, in thinking about Labor Day, I have a question for you. Do you remember your first job? I've spent some time recently thinking about my first job of preparing for this message and for Labor Day. I I can remember very vividly my first job. I can still see certain sights in my head that bring back memories. I can smell things today that take me back to that first job. And I can specifically remember how much I did not like that job. (laughs) I did not like that work at all. You see, when I was 15 years old, my dad came home one day from work and informed me that he found me a job. Well, the funny thing was, I didn't know I was looking for a job, but he found one anyway for me. He he said it would do me some good. It would teach me some responsibility. It would show me what real hard work is and put a little bit extra spending money in my pocket. Now, 15-year-old me liked that part of it, a little bit of extra money in my pocket. You see, my first job was working on an assembly line. It was an assembly line for a Hallmark bag company. You know the gift bags where you put presents in and you give to somebody? Well, I made those. Uh, You see, what I did was I I took a blank bag and put handles on that bag. And then I slapped a UPC label on that bag. Then I took a stack of those completed bags and put them into a larger packaging bag. I sealed that bag, and then the next thing was I put that bag of bags into a cardboard box. I would fill that cardboard box up, I would tape it up, and then I would put that cardboard box into a larger cardboard box. And then I would take that larger cardboard box that's full of smaller cardboard boxes and put it onto a truck to be shipped so that you might be able to have something to give a present to someone with. It was... An interesting job to say the least. So for eight hours a day in the summer in Louisiana with no air conditioning, I found myself doing this job. I was thrilled my dad found me this job, as you could imagine. You know, oddly enough, I realized on the first day that I worked there that my friend John, his dad found him the same job. All of a sudden, we showed up the first day together, not realizing that our dads had found us this job and worked together for a little while. Well, when I was 15 and working in this job, most of the other people that worked there were at least twice my age. I I didn't have much in common at all with the majority of the people that worked there, but I I tried to put myself out there. Even though I'm a natural introvert, I I tried to put myself out there to to meet others, to to be friendly. But I found out that that, that some of these other people that I, I was working with were some of the rudest people I had ever encountered in my life. I would say hi to them, just a simple greeting, and get no response whatsoever. In fact, much of the time, they wouldn't even look up at me. I just thought these are the rudest people. So after several days of trying to engage with these other workers, I I shared my frustration with my dad. I told him about it, how how frustrating it was to, to try to form relationships and to not even get any response whatsoever. Well, then that's when my dad informed me, oh, forgot to tell you something. Most of the people that work in this factory are deaf. They can't hear you. Well, well, that would have been nice to have known before I started working there, but that was just a small detail that my dad left out. You see, um, I tell you this story to share an experience that I've learned with you and perhaps something that you've learned as well in your life. And that experience is the value in hard work. See, no matter what we do for a living, there's value in working hard and giving it your all. You know, while I didn't love that job, 
I, I wanted to work hard. I, I wanted to do my best. And I learned that there truly is value in working hard. You know, that experience has, has helped to shape much of who I am today. And, and even helped to shape my work ethic too. It, it helped me understand that also that even though someone might have what others would consider a disability, that people are capable of so much. So much when they put their mind to it and they put forth hard work. You know, I learned a whole lot from those other employees in the several years that I ended up working for this company. We worked really hard to, to try to understand each other. Even though there was a little bit of a barrier there, we tried hard to understand each other, to get along, and to work well together. Well, this morning's scripture has a few things to say about this concept of, of work, of, of laboring as well. So I, I invite you to hear our scripture lesson today. It's from the New Testament book of Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. And then I'm going to jump ahead to verses 23 through 24. I invite you to hear these words from the Apostle Paul. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And jumping to verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we give thanks to God. You know, after reading and studying this passage for a little bit, there's a concept that jumped out at me and has recently convicted me as of late. Verse 17, hear this verse 17 again. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. See, everything we do, whatever you do, should be an act of thanksgiving to God as an expression of our love for Jesus Christ. You know, so often we think about our work as a profession, what we do uh, as a profession that allows us to make a living, to provide for our families, to pay bills, to prepare for retirement, and the list goes on. Well, all these things are true and great reasons to work. Have you ever thought about your work as an act of thanksgiving to God? You know, are we grateful to God for the things that God allows us to do? Whether if it's something we're paid to do or not. Now, I don't know that some of you are probably saying, Michael, look, I'm, I'm retired. I've done my time. I'm not working anymore. Well, in the kingdom of God, there's always work to be done. Well, maybe you're a student and you're in school. You might be saying, I, I don't work. I go to school. Well, school is your work right now. You can work for God in school and in the church as well. And I realize it's not real common for most students to be thankful for the fact that they get to go to school every day in the United States. But when you travel across the world and you see what a privilege education truly is, you understand that it really is a gift, something for which to be thankful. 
you know, if, if we take this concept of work a, a step further, we know that in the Christian faith and in the Christian tradition, our works are acts that we do or offer to God. There, these works aren't necessarily things we get paid to do, uh, although some of us have that luxury. They are works that display our devotion to God. You see, when we serve God, we're not doing God a favor. Have you ever thought that? If I, if I do this act or this work, then I'm, I'm helping God out. I'm doing God a favor. You see, God allows us to work for the kingdom's sake. God doesn't need us, but God wants us. So we should approach our work with gratitude because of this sheer fact that God wants and allows us to work for the kingdom's sake. And in the New Testament book of James, uh, I love that book. James is such a, a, a clear communicator, kind of to the point. Well, James talks about the connection between our faith and our works. James chapter 2, verse 18, he says, But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. So show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. A few verses later, James 2, 26, he says, For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. You know, one of the things that really drew me to the United Methodist tradition is this focus on both and. So let me, let me unpack that just a little bit. There's a focus on both personal holiness and social holiness. It's necessary that I, I cultivate a life of devotion in my personal walk with Christ as I study scripture and as I pray daily. But we're also called to live a life of faith that's lived out in our works. It's our faith in action. Did you know that in the Methodist tradition, we have a set of articles of religion? And these articles define what we believe about specific and certain theological issues. Well, concerning good works, here's what Article 10 has to say. Although good works, which are the fruits of faith and follow after justification, cannot put away our sins and endure the severity of God's judgment, yet are they pleasing and acceptable to God in Christ and spring out of a true and lively faith, insomuch that by them a lively faith may be as evidently known as a tree is discerned by its fruit. So it begs the question, how are we living out our faith? Maybe another way to ask it is, how are we practicing our faith through our work and through Christian service and good works? You know, the world needs to see our faith in action. When people look at you, and when people look at me, do they think, you know, that's a person of deep faith who's living their faith out in his or her life? Or do we separate the various parts of our lives? You know, this, this Christian part of my life, it's, it's reserved for Sundays or uh, every once in a while, but it's not going to intermingle with the rest of my life, whether it's at home or at work or at school or wherever we may be. I don't know about you, but I, I want when people, when they look at me, I want them to think, you know, he's doing something for something greater or someone greater than himself. You know, whatever we do, whatever you do, let's commit our work to the Lord for his glory and his kingdom's sake. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, Paul says this. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. 
Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The author and theologian Warren Wiersbe, he states, because of the assurance of Christ's victory over death, we know that nothing we do for him will ever be wasted or lost. We can be steadfast in our services, unmovable in suffering, abounding in ministry to others because we know our labor is not in vain. That's worth saying again. Our labor is not in vain. You know, whether you see the fruits of your labor or not, if you're doing it for the glory of God and and for God's kingdom, it's not in vain. Did you know that right here at Roswell United Methodist Church, we provide a plethora of opportunities for you to to work for the Lord? Um, Just below the screen now, if you scroll down, you'll see a connect card. You can engage with us there and we can help find a place where it might be a good fit for you, where you can work and offer your work to God. Perhaps it's teaching Sunday school for children. Maybe it's a a member of the choir. It it could be an usher or a greeter or a member of our audio video team. It could be a part of our missions ministry or even a a youth small group leader. There, There are so many opportunities you know, and if, um, and if you're not serving in a particular area, contact us. We'll help you find the right place to plug in. But I think it's important for us to take some time and to give thanks to God for the fact that we are allowed to work for God and for God's kingdom. And let's remember that we do not labor in vain because we aren't the only ones working here. God is working too. God is working in you, in me, and through you, and through me. God's Holy Spirit is is moving and wanting to expand his kingdom on this earth through us, the very body of Christ, the church for the world. You know, when I was... 15 and I began working that job, I really I couldn't stand the work. It, it wasn't fun and, at all. Not something I saw myself doing for the rest of my life, but I wanted to do a good job. I learned to tolerate the work and I, I got pretty good at it, if I'm being honest. But I also learned to enjoy the people that I worked with and the relationships that I formed and what I learned from others in that experience. But you see, I wanted to work hard. Do you wanna know why I wanted to work hard? It's because I wanted to please my father. I wanted him to know how much I appreciated and loved him. Well, may that be our goal in our works of faith, our faith in action. Whatever you do, in word or deed, whether it's your profession or works that you do in the church or in the community, let's strive for the same goal. Whatever you do, may our goal be to please God and to give thanks to Jesus Christ. Happy Labor Day. Let's pray. God, thank you for the gift of this day and the gift of work for the fact that we can can use our gifts to build your kingdom. Thank you for, for calling us and drawing us to yourselves. God, we know that you don't need us, but we're so glad that you want us. And we're so glad that you allow us opportunities to be in service to you, whether if it's something we do for a profession to make a living or if it's something that we do to serve you in the church or in the community. God, thank you that you allow us to be a part of your good work. And God, thank you that you are working in us and through us, that we are not alone, 
that your Holy Spirit is moving in incredible ways. May we be open to the ways that you want to work in us. God, show us your way so that whatever we do, whether it's in word or in deed, God, that we might please you and express our love for Jesus Christ. We love you. We praise you. All in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.